Welcome back to Dev Lockhart. And I know it's been a while. It's, I believe it's been about a year and a half. I think the last video I posted was in uh, November of 2018. Um, but yeah, I'm back. Uh, I've been in school. Um, I've just been really busy. I've still made it art, but I haven't had the time to record because you know, recording makes the whole process at least two to three times as long as it would be if you were to just, you know, create something. Um, but yeah, so uh, welcome back. Um, sorry for the wait. I mean, I have, you know, sorry, I just have a lot of other things going on that are a little more important. <clears throat> but yeah, as you guys can see, I'm um, drawing a, a little girl on a, on a tracing paper. And so right now I'm uh, putting graphite on the back just by, you know, shading in the back and only over the parts that are... Uh, that pencil marks in the back um, and so by doing this when you flip it back over and trace over it um, the graphite leaves marks in the canvas very subtle but they're there um, just so you can get an idea of where things are gonna go and not a lot of people um, start with the background before they you know paint the main subject person object sometimes an apple like not a lot of people you know start with the background they usually paint that and then go into the background but in this case I wanted to um, start with the background because uh, not gonna lie I don't usually paint people so I was, I was pretty nervous I can't can't even lie to you guys um, and in the background I wanted to do like a bluish color as you can see and I also intended to put um, some glow-in-the-dark paint in it not as much just some subtle glow-in-the-dark paint and when I did this I woke up the next morning and realized that I guess maybe because I used two different brands of paint and the glow-in-the-dark paint was a little more um, watered down it made cracks in the paint and so and it, <clears throat> it was only in uh, one section and so I just pretty much decided to because I couldn't get rid of the cracks I tried to get rid of it and you could still see it because now that second layer is still seeping down in the cracks which makes it uneven and so I decided to kind of make it crack throughout and embrace it and I feel like embracing mistakes like that are easier when you're not doing like a portrait of something when it's like for instance this is a cartoon character that I created um, you know it doesn't have to be exact it's not like I'm drawing a picture of Drake or something like when I'm done it needs to still look like Drake so you can't really you know I mean you can do an abstract version maybe but if your intent is to make it look exactly like them then it's harder to embrace you know mistakes like that but <clears throat> and I mean it's the background so it doesn't really matter that much um, but yeah uh, so this is like the hardest part for me is like just getting my shading and stuff down um, like I have a problem with like because I know obviously like where your cheek is the tip of your nose your forehead and maybe your chin is where the lighter colors are gonna be but it's the the blending factor which is pretty hard when it comes to acrylic paint because you know it'll dry up and spreads out but like I don't know if you've ever used oil paint it doesn't dry up as fast and it feels like you have a lot more than what you what it looks like like you could put like a little dot 
of oil paint and it'll last for a while um, and it's way easier to blend because it doesn't dry up as much or as quick sorry and so you're able to you know you know put like a darker color to the left and then a lighter color to the right and then just blend in the middle and eventually you can spread it out enough to where it's a smooth transition but with acrylic paint it it just gets annoying and like I said I don't really paint that much so my first layer was really streaky like you can see all of the little um, paintbrush strokes that I had in it and so I didn't know this which it makes sense obviously um, but you know the more layers you do the smoother it is so um, for instance I talked to one of my friends and he uh, he told me that he kind of stopped working on a piece because it looked streaky and then I was like yo I'm not gonna lie I just I just did multiple layers and it handled that streakiness so if you just go back over it you know once or twice it'll start to smooth itself out um, and like another problem I run into which I'm sure a lot of you do uh, as far as painters um, I know if you're like me uh, I don't like wasting paint but with this you always want to make sure when you make a certain color you want to have more than you need because I would paint like half the face and then realize like dang it I don't have more of that color so now it's kind of like you try to recreate it and it never comes out exactly like you know the, the color you had previously so that was a struggle as well all of this stuff is like common sense but sometimes like you need somebody to like tell it to you for you to go oh yeah duh like you know what I mean it's like that aha moment that teachers talk about all the time um, but yeah so I just started off with the face because when you think about um, skin like that's kind of like the first layer to the to the body I guess because you know on top of that you have hair and your lips and your eyes and stuff and then um, if you guys remember from the very beginning of the video I had um, a scarf that had a bow in it and so you know obviously that goes on top of the hair so that's kind of the order that I do everything in because you don't want to like I said the scarf is like it's all based on layers so it doesn't really matter if the scarf covers too much of the hair or if it covers certain parts of the hair or whatever the case may be you don't want to do the scarf and then do the hair and then you end up messing up the scarf because the scarf in real life is sitting on top of the hair so you want to make sure you do things in order so it makes sense um, I hope that made sense <laughs> um, but yeah and backtracking a little bit to just the beginning of this whole process um, I had one of my family members reach out and they wanted me to create a painting of um, a young black girl that had afro puffs um, and she she has three daughters um, and they have an Instagram called science sis I'll put their information down in the description um, but you know they have their own page where uh, you know they just do little simple um, like you know science projects and stuff and so you know if you have a younger child you can um, you know go follow their page and even do some of the experiments that they do because um, some stuff I wish I did as a kid like I missed out on all that like we kind of did some boring stuff so um, and then you know it just keeps your kids um, busy when they're not in school and it kind of adds like a fun factor to you know science so now they're learning with you know a little bit of um, fun mixed in with it um, but yeah so once she told me she wanted a painting I was like you want me to draw something she said no painting I was like ah like I said I don't paint like if I do paint it's like abstract stuff it's not 
anything like this like, I don't really plan my abstract stuff out too much um, prior because at the beginning you could see I had like a notebook paper or a notebook page with a uh, with my sketch on it um, but yeah so when I created this character I um, just went on Google and looked up just different features that I was looking for and kind of like, like for instance the eyes I just draw like certain eyes off to the side that I like and then for the nose draw a bunch of noses uh, hair face position lips the scarf was pretty straightforward I didn't really need anything to reference for that um, and even the hair but I still reference something for that too um, but yeah I just took all those references and elements and tried to see which ones mesh together well and so um, yeah this is the final result um, that I came up with um, and also going back to the tracing paper um, using that is good too because I know that I've drawn straight onto the canvas and I'm heavy handed so like now when I erase it sometimes leaves like a little indention from where I was drawing it at and when you use the tracing paper you can you know put the tracing paper anywhere on the canvas so you can make sure that it's centered and everything before you um, you know go back over the lines to leave the the residue on the canvas um, so yeah and with the scarf I just did the first layer I'm doing the same thing with the hair um, I'm doing I know I might not be using typical uh, techniques as far as like because I don't like having my hand just floating in the air so I use my other arm as you can see to like kind of stabilize it um, but yeah, I just did one layer of, uh, pink for the, the scarf, and once I did one smooth layer, I went back and started adding, you know, the shading and stuff, um, and I'm now doing the same thing for the, uh, for the hair, um, and you'll see later on, I used, like, a little, uh, nail to kind of scratch a little detail into it so like for instance where the hair is like the afro puffs are going to be more fluffy and then where the hair is like on the scalp it's going to be um i can't even think of the word but you can see like the direction the hair is going in so i tried to make sure i like scratched in the direction that the hair would be going in and right now i'm adding texture um to the hair so it doesn't just feel like a solid color like it has like a little you know fluffiness to it um and i'm using a, a grocery bag um yeah and even with the hair that's like peeking out from under the scarf uh, that's on the face i end up panning that in as well and um because i didn't really like how the lines looked um so by coloring it all in I just went back in and kind of went over those lines that I originally had with the, um, with the nail and I end up doing the same thing for the uh, eyebrows as well um, yeah and let me know if you guys like uh, side note let, let me know if you guys like the music that's in the background um, I'm going for more of a, a hip-hop, R&B-ish, lo-fi-ish, like, just chill type of um, vibe for my videos. Um, so, yeah, that's that's just the, the vibe I'm going for. With this one, I sped it up a little bit um, as far as, like, the, the music, especially for the first uh, part of it, because... This painting took hours like it's not like a typical like YouTube video where like well painting videos aren't like typical YouTube videos where you can just like talk and stuff 
like this is probably like six or seven hours worth of painting all condensed down into 20 minutes so I'm sorry the video is long but I wanted to make sure I got everything in it that I wanted to um, uh, right now I'm doing the eyes and so this goes back to that layering thing I made sure I did the the first layer um, and the color of the eye and then the pupil obviously in cartoons it was usually way bigger than you know my actual pupil so um, I just did that instead because it would to me it's easier to just do the whole background in that light brown and then just paint over that with black because blacks you know it's gonna block out whatever colors in the background as long as you do you know a couple layers um, and right now I'm doing the shading so when you shade um, you want to make sure that you add um, like when you do the shading lines you want to make sure that they're going in the direction of the scarf and make sure they're kind of rounded a little bit to give the scarf like a three-dimensional look and not like that it's flat on a surface which it is but you want to try to make it look as realistic as possible which I was able to get away with a little bit because this is a cartoon and not like a real person so it didn't have to be like overly realistic um, and then the pupil was coming out a little weird and I realized that like it needed to go beyond the eyelid right there so I brought it down a little more um, which also gave me a little room to make it more rounded because it was very ovalish um, but yeah and so um, as y'all can see the right eye is very like it's not very but it's definitely more squinted than the left so um, I'll talk about that in a second uh, and so this is the last layer because you know the glare goes over both the pupil goes over the uh, eye or whatever it's like the glare of the eye so I made sure that was the last thing I did and right now I'm using this stuff called tulip I believe um, people use it on shirts and it's like thick paint and it it kind of raises off the surface a little bit so I thought that would be a good feature and you know with cartoons they always have like a black outline so I think that's what made this look more cartoonish which was um, you know the look that I was going for um, and then obviously you can see I put a little um, some eyelashes on there so with this you can go in and you know make the lines a little cleaner and add small details like the, the eyelashes and um, yeah, and I'm able to clean up the lines and with the squinted eye, I made sure that I put the tulip in the corner of it or on the uh, interior of the eye, if that makes sense. So if like I have a line from the eye, like I make sure I put the, the tulip paint like on the inside of it. And then for the um, for the eye that was bigger, I put the, the paint on the inside of the line and then for the smaller eye, I put the tulip paint on the outside um, just to make the eyes look a little more even um, and right now I wish I had a better angle of what I was doing but um, having paint on the side of the canvas is pretty important to me um, because it just helps it um, stay off the wall and it looks a lot way more cleaner especially when it matches up with you know the background so this is the final piece. Um, if you guys think I should do more um, cartoon characters or portraits or anything, uh, leave a comment. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank y'all for watching.